Well, hello there, YouTube. Got that funk? Thanks for joining me. This video was inspired by my friend Soretta Yuki and his video on the Breakfast Club channel yesterday called On Racism. And whilst it's not a direct response video as such to any of the points he was making, it is sort of inspired by him. Uh, this is a subject that I've given thought to on and off my entire life. And recently on YouTube, I've been witness to conversations about you know whether or not everyone is to some degree a racist. And uh, that's a proposition which I am extremely resistant to. And I understand that uh, there are people who resist that accusation based on the fact that they want to cover for their own uh, racism. I hope that I don't fall into that category and personally I don't think I do but it's a subjective opinion about myself so obviously uh, you know that's only worth what that's worth. But when I approach the world, when I approach life, I live in London now which is one of the most racially diverse cosmopolitan cities certainly in Europe if not in the whole world. And prior to living here, I had this mistaken assumption that because it was such a cosmopolitan, multicultural city, uh, that the people who lived here were probably more tolerant and less prone to racism than uh, people perhaps in other parts of the country. And if anything, I've noticed the opposite is true. I mean, for the first 20 plus years I lived in the UK, I lived in the West Country which is relatively rural, and uh, I really hardly ever encountered people that I would consider to be racist in the West Country. Um, not that I never did, but it was very rare. Whereas here, partly I suppose because I work in construction now, which is rife with people with a lot of prejudices. Um, so possibly it's, it's not just where I live, it's the industry I work in, but I certainly get exposed to an awful lot of racist attitudes on a regular basis, and it is incredibly disheartening to me. Because I don't think not being a racist is particularly difficult. It would be a mistake to say I don't recognize race in the sense that I don't recognize someone's ethnically different to me. Um, but what I can say with my hand on my heart is I don't uh, have a blank sheet in my head where I fill in the blanks based on someone's ethnicity. When I meet someone for the first time, uh, you know, that person starts off with a completely blank slate. Their ethnicity is noticed by me, but it's incidental. I don't draw any conclusions based on it whatsoever. Um, you know, I want to be judged in the same way. I want to be judged by the content of my character. I don't want people to judge me because they don't like my shoes, or because I've got fucked up crooked teeth, or because I have a bald head, or anything else. I don't want to be judged on superficial issues. I want to be judged on who I am, how I behave. I want to be judged for what I am on this lot in this life. You know what I my actions want to speak for me, not you know uh, my appearance or presumptions based on my appearance. So if I want that for me, then I have to be prepared to extend the exact same courtesy to everybody else. And to me, that's so self-evident you shouldn't even have to say it out loud. But clearly, we do because a lot of people don't want to judge people in the same standards they judge themselves by. And I just don't understand how people get that mentality in the first place, but it's extremely prevalent. And um, I think that's part of the problem as regards issues of race. You know, um, now I've lived in the UK almost half my life. And when I first moved to this country, I didn't think the problems of racism in the UK were as acute as they are in America. Whereas now that I've had 26 years of experience in the UK, I would just say that the problems are completely different here. Uh, but they are just as acute, if not quite so um, bloody and problematic. They are just as acute because they're endemic in certain parts of the culture. And I'm not really sure if or how you can ever get rid of those things. Uh, and I think most people would not like to describe themselves or be described as racists. But I'm not sure how many people really, really put the, uh, the effort into not falling into the trap of preconceived notions about people based on ethnicity. It is a trap and we are surrounded and reinforced with these with these notions all the time. It's happening to us all the time, both overtly and covertly, which is another thing I wanted to say. A few weeks or months back on one of my Breakfast Club videos, um, I had a conversation with Umar Soares. Um, I think the video was cultural appropriation is bullshit. And I mentioned something about covert racism and Omar, sorry, Umar, uh, said to me, that there's no such thing as covert racism. Racism is racism. Uh, what I call covert racism is 
still racism. It's just more insidious because it's not as obvious. And because it's more insidious, it in some ways can be seen as more problematic than what I would call overt racism. And that's something I wanted to throw out there for discussion with my audience. I mean, it's my personal opinion that uh, with prejudices in general, whether you're talking about sexism or homophobia or racism, that there is such a thing as different levels, different degrees of racism or different degrees of homophobia, different degrees of misogyny or sexism. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the lesser degrees are a lesser problem because they all combine to make this incredible huge problem which is racism. Finally I want to close my video down by saying that uh, you know I personally am of the opinion that racism means preconceived notions about someone based on their negative preconceived notions about someone based on their ethnicity or their perceived race. Um, that's my opinion about what racism is and because that's my opinion about racism I think that racism can come from anybody towards anybody from anybody in any group towards anybody about any other group I think different parts of the world have different kinds of racism different groups whichever the dominant group is will almost certainly have a number of prejudices based on uh, the minorities among their own group I can't think of any place on earth where that mentality doesn't pertain to some degree so this is a, a universal problem. We've got our own different versions of it in the UK and in the USA, uh, my two home countries, as it were. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's important. I know I do understand the definition of racism, which basically implies that it's the dominant group that can be racist and the other groups aren't racist in the same way because they are the ones being oppressed. I get it, I get it, I totally get that argument and I don't necessarily invalidate it as an argument. But I think we have to be adult enough to recognize that uh, there are such a thing as different connotations for the same word. That no word means just one thing and only that one thing. Lots of words in the English language have multiple connotations and that's okay. None of those connotations have to invalidate the others. That's my two cents. I look forward to whatever you've got to say in the comment section. Video responses would be even more welcome. And until next time, I want to thank you for watching. May all your ups and downs be ups.